بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone and welcome to This is Football Welcome to a special edition show Ladies and gentlemen Something we haven't had time really to address on this channel Something we haven't ha really had time to speak on on this channel We are here um, Double show today 11pm UK inshallah Make sure you're back um, We're going to be speaking on the game with Tom Little, Kurdish Mons might, might be joining us Rax as well So we got the crew back Um Everyone watching this right now or on the replay, because I know a whole lot of you guys like to watch this on the replay. Please don't forget to slap the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so. Every single person watching this right now, please like, like, subscribe, subscribe. Um, keep getting your thoughts in the comment section down below. I see Everton are up against Brighton. I needed Everton, I need that Everton relegation pack, but it is what it is. I don't think Brighton can catch us anyway. Everyone watching this right now. Make sure you slap the like button. I don't want to keep saying it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, like the video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Comment section. Big up Estonian. Big up Uncle Mike. Big up Tarun. Big up to Mikem. Big up to Hamoudi. Make sure you listen to Ravi. Big up to Anissa. Big up to, to Yuvraj. Big up to Jastabang. Big up to Amrali. Big up to Hafiz. Big up to Luis. Big up to T600. Tariq. Um, big up to Lee Governor, big up to Sultan Manai, Yuvraj, a man like Aliye, always present over here. Big up to Max M, big up to Cool Dude, man like Gaza is in the house. Big up to ZZ, big up to you, uh, big up to Deb Jet, big up to Alex, big up to Matthew, Salam, Hafsa, big up to Kat Sande, my brother, big up Felipe, my guy, who's, you know. He's real worried. Um, big up to Captain Sal. Big up to Ilyas. Big up to you guys, man. Slap up that like button, subscribe. And let's get into it. As you guys can see, big up Hamza, Unexamined Life, Bola. Um, big up to Jake. So as you guys can see in the title, George Schmatka. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. And I don't care to be honest with you. Is Hello Spirit. Is our new sporting director. It's been announced. Um, needed a sporting director. Heading into our most important transfer window and all of that good stuff. Now, you know, before I even get started, as you guys are used to on this channel, we only have real conversations only. We're not here to kiss ass. We're not here to lie. We're not here to just, you know, uh, agree with everything the club do. We're not here to disagree with everything the club do. I just speak my opinion. I speak my the the the, the truth as much as possible. Always say my my opinions without emotions attached. Try to be as balanced as possible about this current situation. And here's my thing, right? One thing I really like about this channel is I've always liked to keep a proper balance. People who have followed me know 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 how much I blamed Klopp for last summer. People who follow me know how much like I blamed Klopp in certain situation. People know how much like, you know, I've had conversations about FSG, but at the same time, I identify maybe what the manager is doing wrong. And here's my thing now. Whatever happens this transfer window is 100% going to be on Jurgen Klopp. Now... Let me preface my statement by obviously stating the obvious for some. Some people might not know they're watching this for the first time. I am FSD out. I'm not one of the, the ones who are FSD in or indifferent or sitting on the bench or uh, sitting on the fence. Sorry. I'm FSD out. Um, you know, I'm, I, I've been active in the whole uh, flying planes over Anfield process, going all at the trunk to show our displeasure and our, you know, um, discontent with the way Liverpool Football Club is run. Now, my thing is, I'm not going to approach this the same way maybe other channels approached it, get you a German expert in here to talk about George Schmatka or do all of that. My thing is, I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm just going to keep it real. All this shows me is we're basically going to be Klopp FC. What I mean by that is, all this whole getting a, a a a best friend, getting a guy you can laugh with and blah, 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 shows me that Klopp is just getting more and more and more power. This takes me back 
to Michael Edwards and what's the name of the new guy? Julian Ward. Both of them kind of quitting their job due to quote unquote encroachment, not being able to do their job properly. And you know, the reason why I mentioned balance at the start of the video is I like to keep a balance in which I don't blame FSG for every single thing that happens. And I don't blame Klopp for every single thing that happens. Sometimes in life, you must be balanced. Try to be as balanced as possible. I know it's difficult. I love Klopp. I'm Klopp Defense League. But sometimes you have to have real conversations about power. Maybe the thirst for power. Maybe just wanting power at said football club. And, you know, I, I, I look at the current situation. And this just shows me now that essentially Klopp's going to be making the transfer decisions. Now, people might say, oh, he's not a yes man. Look at Wolfsburg this, look at Wolfsburg that, blah, 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 blah. The fact that him having a robust sense of humor was somehow pushed on in the media as some sort of narrative as to why we're getting a sporting director worries me a little bit. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I'm the most educated man on the matter and I am a, uh, you know, I'm a some sort of, a Bundesliga guru who knows everything about, you know, this uh, Schmatka guy and blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, I just feel like, and, and the reason why I actually wanted to do this video is, as Hussam, as a channel, This Is Football, I've always liked to keep a balance. I'm not going to sit up here and just FSG, 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 FSG to blame for everything. And I'm not going to sit up here and just say that Klopp is to blame for everything. I feel like I can argue with the FSG out crowd and I will argue with the FSG in crowd. Because me and, for example, Corbel Irad, big up to him. I have no problem with them. Big up John, big up the O'Sullivans. Me and them disagree on Klopp being blameless. At the same time, I disagree with maybe a Paul Machen in which, you know, FSG are blameless. I sit up here and I, I I try to keep I try to keep it real. I try to just be as balanced as possible with the situation. And here's the thing: from speaking to many people who are connected with the footballing world, speak, speaking with many people, maybe who know agents, know sporting directors, know football club, have worked with football clubs. You know, one thing that exists in the world of football at a massive spectrum, whether it is managers, whether it is sporting directors, whether it is players, is something called ego. Football is suffering from an ego problem. There is an egotistical nature in football. Now, the reason why I think that we didn't go get a Don Dada sporting director Someone who's well known, a Paul Mitchell, someone like that, is ego. The sporting director's ego and Klopp's ego. Because this is what I want to help you guys understand one thing. If we were to get a Paul Mitchell, if we were to get an actual elite sporting director, there's going to be an ego clash. There is 100% going to be an ego clash. There's 100% going to be a thing in which Paul Mitchell wants to do something really badly. Klopp doesn't want to do it. Blah, 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 blah. And drama ensues due to the egotistical nature of football as a sport. And for me personally, I look at said situation currently at Liverpool Football Club. And I feel like we really did need a sporting director with a little bit of a CV, you know, someone of the upper echelon of sporting directors, if you would like. And this is why when I say I'm, 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 I'm balanced, I've not been one of the people who are club. I'm not club out. I am club in. I'm FSG out. But at the same time, I can recognize club's faults. And when two sporting directors quit their roles, in a period of a year, due to quote-unquote encroachment, it worries me a little bit from the outside of the pitch standpoint. Can Klopp work with these sporting directors with massive CVs? Can he work with them? 
if I'm not mistaken, I swear two, three days ago, I think it was Aston Villa that announced uh, an unbelievable sporting director. I think he came from Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken, a sporting director of, of the upper echelon, if you would like to come in and, 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 and kind of change things over for Aston Villa. And I feel like Unai Emery does not have that ego. Unai Emery does not have that encroachment in which he's going to sit with a sporting director and be like, blah, 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 blah. And, like, my thing is, people are going to say, Michael Edwards didn't have a CV. See, Ali's already said it. You, you, you see how I always predict what the people are going to say? You see how I said it before the comment was even placed? You know what this reminds me of, Ali? This reminds me of when we went into this season and people said, Remember when we waited six months for Virgil van Dijk? We're just going to wait a year for Jude Bellingham. And look how that turned out. The situation at said time, Ali, was a completely different situation to now. It was a Liverpool startup situation. We're no longer at a startup phase. We are at a we must fix this and we must win now phase. And here's my thing now. When it comes to Jurgen Klopp, Jurgen Klopp clearly has a talent ID problem. Let us cut the crap here. It is well documented. He wanted Brandt and Godza ahead of Mane and Salah. And, you know, it was Michael Edwards, of course, that facilitated that. Uh, it's well documented. It's not me who told you this. Maybe I was one of the people who told you this first. Maybe you don't believe it, but it's well documented. Uh, you know, uh, we knew about uh, Caicedo from his days in Ecuador and we didn't get it over the line and blah, blah, blah. Maybe we didn't believe in it as a club. I just think Klopp needs someone who agrees with him. I think Klopp doesn't like it when there's a clash. And this is exactly why we're not sat here with a Paul Mitchell. This is exactly why we're not sat here with a Don Dada of, of sporting directors. This is exactly why we're not sat here with a, with a unbelievable elite sporting director. The reason is very simple. Egos, egotistical clashes, problems. And now... I look at it from the perspective of we have simply now become Klopp FC. We are now going to be Klopp FC. And this puts more, more pressure on Jurgen Klopp this summer. Not pressure in terms of the budget, pressure in terms of transfer decisions. Because now what this shows us is one thing. And this is where I'm going to speak on the future now. This is, this is what it shows us now 100%. Whichever transfer decisions we make this summer is all going to be 100% Klopp's decisions. There is no clash of egos. There is no fights. There is no Michael Edwards telling him, no, you shouldn't do this. You should do that. Now it's simply 100% Jurgen Klopp making those decisions. So if we sign Mason Mount for 70 million, it is 100% Jurgen Norbert Klopp's fault. If we sign anyone right now, for that much money, if we sign McAllister, hell, that I'm going to speak on in a second, for 80 million, it is 100% going to be Klopp's fault. And now I sit up here and say, and now I sit up here and I say, ladies and gentlemen of this fine channel watching us right now, what is the end game? Are we going to turn into Arsenal in which Arsene Wenger kind of had all the power, stuff like that? Or what exactly? Are we going to have a disastrous season due to Klopp's sentimentality? Is Klopp going to treat the centre-backs in 2023 the same way he treated the centre midfielders in 2022? In which way he's going to sit down with one of the people from the Anfield Rap or Redmond TV and go like, tell me why we need a centre-back. We've got Joe Gomez, we've got Joel Matip, we've got Konate and Van Dijk. Tell me why we need a centre-back. That is what I fear the most for our future. And we're going to address now a little bit more the future of Liverpool Football Club. Big up to Ryan who says, big up, bro. Thank you so much, Ryan, for the super chat and all your consistent support. Honestly, you've been elite to the channel. He says, big up, my bro. No top sporting director wants to work with two um, power freaks, Klopp and Linders. I love Jürgen, but power needs to be taken away. And this is what I've been speaking on. And this is why on this channel, you guys... And, you know, I really do believe this in my heart of hearts. The reason why people watch this channel is I just feel like I'm balanced and I'm genuine and I'm positive when there needs to be positivity. I'm, quote, unquote, negative when there needs to be negativity. I'm just as realistic as, as, as 
you know, as it comes. I try to be as realistic as possible. And I do feel like there's an egotistical power clash happening at Liverpool Football Club right now. And that is the reason in which why Julian Ward and Michael Edwards both left due to quote-unquote encroachment, if you remember I am. In the space of a year, we had two sporting directors leave. People are mentioning, oh, he fought with the Wolfsburg owner and blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay, fair enough. But our situation is completely different. He ain't going to fight with FSG because they're going to have him out the door. You need to understand the ownership situation in Germany is a lot different to the ownership situation in, in the English Premier League. And, you know, like, it's just, it's just, it's just, I'm going to explain now more when I get to the future and I speak on the players, but I completely agree with the super chat right here. The, maybe the power is a bit too much. And big up to Ryan, who's back with another super chat. He says, giving Klopp more power with his shocking talent ID and sentimentality is a recipe for disaster. Ryan just gets it, man. Ryan just gets it. On, I, I wish I, You know what? I should just end the video and keep this super chat on the screen. Like, if this is the problem. And these top reds will defend it. It's annoying. Top reds are hands down the biggest disease to your experience as a Liverpool supporter. Hands down. They want to gatekeep the club. Have you been to Anfield? Do you know more than Klopp? Blah, blah, blah. Guess what, guys? Unpopular opinion. After this season, the do you know more than Klopp card has expired. Because factually speaking, we were all right and Klopp was wrong. Whether you like to admit it or not, Klopp is not the Messiah. Klopp is not someone sent down by God. Klopp is a human being who makes mistakes. And I will criticize when I need to, and I will prop him when I need to. There's a reason why he's the Liverpool manager and I'm doing YouTube. I understand. I'm not saying I know more than Klopp. But the whole, you know, oh my God, do you know more than Klopp card? That's expired now. That's expired. We can no longer run that card like it's some sort of flex, like some sort of intellectually, you know, I've just ruined your argument response. Oh my God, do you know more than Klopp? You have just triggered my trap card. No, 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 no. That doesn't work anymore. That just doesn't work anymore. Now, we're going to be having real conversations because factually speaking, factually, not my opinion, Factually speaking, as per Jurgen Klopp himself, who came out of the media and said, I'm wrong and you all were right, we were correct and Klopp was wrong. Full stop. So let us all cut the BS here. Let us all cut the crap here. Klopp is not immune to criticism. Klopp is not the Messiah. And we're going to have these conversations now about the future. Thanks so much, Ryan, for the super chat. But before I do that, guys, almost 200 people in here. We ain't even on 100 likes yet. Stop what you're doing right now. Slap that like button. Subscribe to the Swiss Football if you're ready to do so. Every single person watching us right now, please like, like, subscribe, subscribe right now. Like the video, subscribe to the Swiss Football if you're ready to do so. And of course, big up as always. Special shout out to Ryan for the super chats. Thanks so much for your support, Ryan. Love for the love, brother. Make sure you all slap the likes. Make sure you all subscribe to this is football now. Now, like the video, subscribe. Yalla. The next time I want to look down, I want to see 100 likes. Let's get to 100 likes minimum. 200 people in here. So now, you know, here's the thing. This upcoming summer transfer window, and this is the thing that I was touching on. Come on, guys, we're five likes away from 100. Yalla, slap that like button. Slap it. This upcoming transfer window, this upcoming one that's about to happen. He, sa he says... It's not like Big Up Kusai says, it's not like Klopp didn't know we needed midfielders. In my opinion, he chose to like his the owners didn't want to back him and he wanted to cover their asses. No, 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 no. I disagree with this completely. It is well documented that Klopp doesn't like plan Bs. I'll tell you the problem with that. Mo Salah was a plan B. Sadio Mane was a plan B. That's the problem with not liking plan Bs. It is well documented, not just, but you know, let's take the most Bait, obvious example, Qusay. Forget Liverpool PR, forget FSG PR, forget everything. Matthias Nunes' agent came out and said, we waited for Liverpool. Full stop. We waited for Liverpool, Liverpool didn't want to make the offer. There is no way you can convince me that if Jurgen Klopp 
wanted Kaiseido in May 2022 for like 40 million he couldn't have gotten. You and I both know that that decision could have been made. He came out a week before the transfer window ended and said, I was wrong and you guys were right, we need a midfield. So that's the thing. You need to understand that as well, Kosai. Even though I'm FSG out, Klopp is not just uh, like zero blame. I, I hate when people just do zero blame on Klopp. Klopp definitely needs to be held accountable for his decisions as well. So here's the thing now. Let me just say, carry on with what I was, what I was saying. When it comes to this summer transfer window, I'm not looking, please focus at what I'm saying because I don't want you to change my words or argue something I'm not arguing. I'm not blaming Jurgen Klopp for the budget. This is why we're flying an FSG out plane. This is why I'm FSG out. Please understand that I'm not going to sit up here and go like, oh my God, you know, the reason why we're not going to sign Jude is Jurgen Klopp. No, the reason why we're not going to sign Jude Bellingham is Fenway Sports Group. Full stop. Money. That is the reason why we're not going to sign Jude Bellingham. I, I haven't denied that. I, I refuse to deny it. I'm not talking in terms of budget. I'm talking in terms of decisions. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, Klopp has a £150 million budget. If he signs McAllister for £80 million and Mount for £70 million, who should I blame? Because it's time for us to be real now, guys. Once again, please understand, I'm not Klopp out. I'm Klopp in. I'm Klopp Defense League, furthermore. But who are we blaming here? If come June time, you see Mason Mount walk through the club for £70 million and McAllister for £80 million, who are we going to blame? This is the thing now I speak on. The biggest problem, the biggest culprit at Liverpool Football Club is Fenway Sports Group. That does not mean that I will absolve Klopp of any responsibility or any accountability. If we sign Mason Mount for £70 million, pounds, I'm blaming Jurgen Klopp. Because I would rather spend that exact money on Kefren Turam and keep £10 million, give them to someone in bonuses. Hell, let someone win a jackpot from the fans on Twitter or something. It's better than that. Here's the thing. If Jurgen Klopp comes out this summer, um, we have Curtis Jones. It's like a new signing. I'm also going to lose my mind. It's the truth. Because we've had it up to here now. You guys need to understand, the reason why people are losing patience, and I understand it, is because the COVID year, the full COVID season, 2020, 2021, when we were defending champs, the whole centre-back crisis thing happened and blah, blah, blah. We're like, okay, you know what? We're not even going to say anything. We, we had a centre-back crisis. A year after that, we lose the league by a point, lose the Champions League final. This year now, absolute disastrous season. And if any Liverpool fan, any Liverpool fan try to convince you that us finishing in the top four is a success, they're straight up lying to your face. I'm not a PR spin guy. I'm not trying to get no special interview with the Jurgen Club. I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that. I, I'm here to, to say the truth, you guys. And if it upsets people along the way, that's not my problem. Top four, even given the context, is not a some sort of successful season. Because if I told anyone that with four games to go, we're going to be fighting for top four, no one is going to tell me it's a successful season. Furthermore, if I told anyone we're going to finish in fourth place, is it a successful season? No one is going to say, yes, it's a successful season. It's the truth. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm just realistic. You don't have Allison and Van Dyke and Trent and Robertson and Fabinho and Thiago and Mo Salah and blah, blah, blah to be a top four team. Top four team, let's just sell all these players and let's just start fresh with a bunch of youngsters and let us just go get top four. That's top four team. We are not a top four team. We are a win the league team. And even in the recent form, it's, it's been shown. Win after win after win after win. So no one is going to convince me that this is some sort of positive, you know, that we got top four. It's a positive for me for us playing Champions League because we always turn up in the Champions League. I will recognize that part, of course. 
because when Liverpool Football Club are, are appear in the Champions League, we don't appear to make up the numbers. We appear to play football. We appear to compete. We appear to win. So we are there when it comes to the Champions League. But it's not going to be, you know, pulled out as some sort of success. Oh my God, we got Champions League football this successful year. No, it's not successful year. We have failed this year and we failed the year before and we failed the year before. It's the truth. Our successful seasons were 18, 19, 19, 20. It's the truth. People might get upset. That's their problem, not mine. I try to be as real as possible, you guys, because my thing is... I can't appease the FSG out crowd 100% because I blame Jurgen for some of it. And I can't blame, you know, appease the FSG in crowd because I'm FSG out. You just you can't make people happy all the time. But you need to listen to the conversations and the discussion. You know, maybe I'm right on, on, on some of it. You know, maybe I'm wrong on some of it, of course. Um, no one is 100% right. Now, my thing is, I look at our current situation at, 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 at Liverpool Football Club. This employment of George Schmatka, who people tell me, oh my God, he's not a yes man, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair enough. I think even if he is not a yes man, this summer specifically with Julian Ward still there, I think it's going to be Julian Ward still for this summer, if I'm not mistaken, or even if it's this George guy. I'm looking at Jürgen. I'm going to look at Jürgen after we make the transfer dealings. If Jurgen Klopp signs Ugarte, McAllister, and I don't know, whoever, Pedro Goncalves, for example, right? Let's assume, for the sake of argument. Or, or you know, who's a good midfielder? Let's say Lavia, okay? Let's assume, let's assume, once again, our budget is 150 million. He goes, he signs a centre-back. He signs McAllister, Lavia. He signs, you know, Ugarte. We're like, okay, Jurgen Klopp has made fantastic decisions in the transfer market. If Jurgen Klopp Comes out this summer. If I see Mason Mount walk through Liverpool Football Club for £70 million, it is 100% on Jürgen Norbert Klopp and it is not on FSG and I'm not trying to hear it. I'm sorry. Because also we have to be real with ourselves, guys. You need to understand, no manager is perfect. Who's the greatest manager the Premier League has ever seen? It's going to hurt us to say this, but we have to say the truth. Who's the greatest manager the Premier League has ever seen? Alex Ferguson. Alex Ferguson underachieved in Europe. Alex Ferguson only won two Champions Leagues in 30 years. He underachieved. Full stop. Let's cut the crap here. He underachieved. Jurgen Klopp also has mistakes. No manager is perfect. Please understand there is no manager on earth that is perfect. Pep Guardiola overthinks the big game. Inshallah, we're going to be here tomorrow doing the Madrid versus Man City watch along. Would any of you be surprised if he plays Bernardo Silva left back or does some unnecessary madness? No, because we've seen it before. We've seen Pep Guardiola do all sorts of madnesses. We've seen him do all sorts of crazy stuff. You know, 100%. We've seen him, just, we, we've seen everyone do crazy stuff. So let's not sit up here and pretend now that Jurgen Klopp is this perfect manager that can do no wrong, that can't make a mistake and all of that. No, 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 no. Yes, he, he can make mistakes. And we can clearly see he has a talent ID problem. Maybe his eye for talent isn't the greatest. He develops talent at an unreal level. Very good at developing talent. When we sign someone, he improves all of that. But now I ask you guys a simple question that you guys have all answered. And I want you guys to answer it again. 212 people watching us. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe now. Guys, come on. Hit that like button. It's free. What are we doing here? Slap the likes. Like the video. Like, like, subscribe, subscribe now. I will ask you the question again. You have two options. Don't write me paragraphs. I want an answer. If Mason won't walks through the door for 70 million pounds or 60 million or 50 million whose fault is it just tell me Klopp or FSG that's all I want I don't want life stories I don't want paragraphs just tell me is it Klopp is it FSG that's all I want tell me because we have to get to the bottom of this I want to hear your honest opinions really speaking now honest I'm just being truthful you now are are, 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 are looking at this transfer window Cl Mount walks in 50, 60, 70 million. Who is to blame? Regardless of budget, who is to blame? Of course, everyone's saying Klopp. 
This is the thing, man. I'm. You need to understand. I have prefaced my entire statement with "I am Klopp in," and I am FSG out. Please understand. I want big up Jamrock. By the way, been a while since I've seen you. I'm FSG out. Please understand, I want the ownership gone and I am pro the manager. I am Klopp Defense League. I want Klopp to stay. I was there in the trenches when we were 10th, 11th. People in the comment section kept asking me every day, when are you going to be Klopp out? I said, no, I'm Klopp in. I support Jurgen Klopp. That doesn't mean I want him making every single decision on earth. No. No, I do not want him to make every single decision. It's the truth. It's the truth. Mason Mount walks through this door for 60, 70, 80 million pounds. It is 100% on Jurgen Klopp. It's as simple as that. Let us cut the crap here, guys. Like, what are we doing here? Honestly, what, what, what are we doing here? Are we going to sit up here if we pay 70 million for, for Mount and say, like, you know, oh my God, it's FSG's fault? It's the truth. Is the truth? I'm a fizzy out. I'm a fizzy out, 100%. You know, I've been very active in spreading the plane and speaking on the plane and, you know, wanting to fly other planes and, and a little bit of organizational work and what should we write on the plane and all that. I'm, I'm, guys, you need to understand if you like, if you take my blood test, it won't say A plus or B plus or it'll, it'll say FSG out. Like, I need to understand, like, if you lock me in a room with John W. Henry, I don't want to get canceled on YouTube. So, like, you need to understand how much I hate Fenway Sports Group. But 70 million pounds? To get me Mason Mount? Hell, I'll take it a step further. 60 million pounds to get me Mason Mount? 50 million pounds to get me Mason Mount? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Because you know what? All I have to say is what? Take that 70 million, slap 10 million on top of it, Kaiseido. Hell, even try, call Brighton and tell them, I want Kaiseido for 70. I think they accept. 70 million, that's a great price for Kaiseido. Kaiseido is a game changer. Massive difference, you guys. So we have to also look at Jurgen Klopp. Now, Jurgen Klopp did not hire this George Schmatka guy. Of course, it's, it's not him who hired them. It's the ownership who hired them, the CEO. But it's very well documented that Jurgen Klopp was going to be a massive part of choosing the new sporting director. And you know the fact that they mentioned his robust sense of humor? I don't like that. This shows that essentially we're going to become Klopp FC now. Whatever Klopp decides, we were going to go with it. We're going to run with whatever Klopp wants. This is the thing now. These are the uncomfortable conversations. These are the, the, the unfortunate truths for a lot of the guys. And as someone who is Klopp Defense League, I can still recognize that Klopp plays a role in all this. This is why I'm looking at Klopp, the summer transfer window. The summer transfer window, Jürgen, it's your time to shine. Because there's a comment I actually left. It wasn't even a super chat. Shout out to this guy, Romelis. Earlier on, he said, the end is either prosperity or demise, nothing in between. Romelis, I don't even know if you're in the comment section, but that is the most perfect comment to describe our current situation. Big up to you, Romelis. It's one of two. It's either prosperity or demise now. You need to understand. It's either Liverpool Football Club go back to winning the league next season, go back to competing, or it's an even worse demise. Let's cut the crap here. Let's cut the crap here. We know Romelis is spitting. That's it. Either now the demise starts, or we head towards the positive direction. Romelis is spitting. And we will see if it's prosperity. We're going to shake Jurgen Klopp's hand. We're going to say, fantastic job, Klopp. You've done really well. If it's a demise, then the conversation becomes different. Because also, with all due respect, to Liverpool FC, not Klopp FC. So where do we go from here? Anyway, let me address these uh, super chats. 
Guys, 235 people in here. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Come on, I don't want to keep saying it. Big up to Ryan. Big up to Osai, Luis, Amin, and Michael for the super chats. Big up to you guys. I'm going to address all the super chats now. Make sure you all slap the likes. Make sure you all subscribe now. Sink or swim. Exactly. Big up to Luis who says, thank you so much, Luis, as well, for the super chat. Uh, he says, uh, Osam, Jorg is, isn't a yes man. So he will clash with Klopp and transfers, which is 100% needed than a sporting director. Listen, Luis, time will tell. Time will tell. I'm just going based on pattern. And you can't blame me, Lewis. Michael Edwards left due to encroachment. Julian Ward left due to encroachment. They're basically telling you we can't do our jobs properly because the Liverpool Mafia and Pep Linders and Klopp want to be making all the transfer decisions. Now, I am not saying or claiming he's a yes man. I'm not claiming he's a yes man at all. I'm saying he could 100% clash with Klopp, all of that. I simply asked a genuine logical question. Why did we not go get a Don Dada sporting director? Why didn't we go get the upper echelon, best of the best sporting directors? And I explained it to you. I told you, in the world of football, egos exist. Egos in football, ladies and gentlemen, whether we like it or not, is a thing. Egos really are a thing in the world of football. Why isn't Paul Mitchell the new Liverpool sporting director? Why? We all know. The reason why Paul Mitchell is not our new sporting director is Paul Mitchell is going to come in. He's going to want to make to make. He's going to want to make decisions, take decisions. He's not going to sit up there like, oh yes, Jurgen, I have a robust sense of humor. Let us hug it out and do whatever you want. No. Paul Mitchell is going to get involved. He's going to make his transfer decisions. He's going to bring his scouts. He's going to be all action. He's, he's going to do all of that. So this is the thing now. Now you ask yourself, okay, let's sit back. Why didn't we get a Don Dada sporting director? And by the way, sporting directors don't cost a lot of money, Lewis. So that's a weak argument with all due respect. So just think. I, I always like my subscribers, my people who watch me, who, who disagree with me a lot. It's fine. Always just think. Ask yourself the questions. Big up to Khusai says he will not last if he isn't a yes man. Hey, Khusai. All I'm saying, you guys, if three months into the season, we hear, um, you know, George Schmatka has left his job due to encroachment, we know. We know exactly why he left Qusay. That's all I'm going to say. There's a pattern. In life, there's patterns, you guys. In life, there's patterns. Big up to Amin says, Mount would be a good signing. He's versatile. You know, this is what kills me about this whole Mount conversation. Anytime you ask someone, why do you want Mason Mount? They'll tell you half-turn specialist. They'll tell you versatility. They'll tell you work rate. They'll tell you running. Can you give me any football reason? Football reason? You know, usually when I say, Hussam, I want, I want Manuel Ugarte. Hussam, why do you want Ugarte? I think he tackles really well. I think he's an unbelievable destroyer. I think, you know, he can play multiple different positions. I think he passes the ball at an okay level. He's a fighter, but, but notice how I, I spoke on football reasons as well. Why is it anytime someone recommends Mason Mount, you tell me half turn specialist? Is, is that a skill now? Half turns. You know who can do half turns? Curtis Jones. You know who's versatile? Harvey Elliott. I, I do not understand how Liverpool Football Club supporters sit up here and think that Mason Mount is going to be a good signing. Honestly, I, I just don't know how. Big up to Michael Talks Football says, at least we now have director of football. I agree. This guy is a madman, but I fear Klopp wanted someone to agree with his recruiting. This isn't Klopp FC. This is Liverpool FC. Michael, that is my complete... I agree completely with this approach and everything you just said. I completely agree with this approach. I'm going to wait and see. Notice how I haven't made any judgments. I'm not saying, uh, you know, George Schmatka out. Klopp out. Bro. I'm not saying any of that. Never. Never. I'm Klopp in. I'm Klopp. I'm KDL. I'm Klopp Defense League, furthermore. But my thing is, my brother, like, this transfer window, if we start seeing the likes of Mason Mount and 70 million and all these, like, w spending money just in the most wrong way possible, then as a Liverpool fan, you are entitled to ask questions to go like, what is going on here? You know, to, to see like, what, what are we doing wrong? All of these, make no mistake, I'm not one of the ones who cancels people for having opinion. I'm not one of the ones who are like, how dare you question Jurgen Klopp? No, no, you can have fan, you can, you can, you can have an opinion. 
You know, there is nothing wrong with having an opinion. And once again, the do you know more than club card has expired. Because factually speaking, we were all correct and club was wrong last summer. It's, it's, it's the truth. Tell me why we need a midfielder. I, I wish I was sat in that interview instead of that guy from the Anfield rap who started looking at Klopp like it's his wife in the honeymoon instead of actually answering the question. But thank you so much, Michael. And by the way, I don't say this often about people. But if you are not a subscriber to Michael Talks Football, you're missing out. Elite, 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 elite European content creator knows ball. This guy was speaking about Kvaracilia before he became a thing for Napoli. He knows ball. Make sure you subscribe. Big up to you, Michael. Thank you. Big up to DC who says, Klopp has to grow a pair and move on the useless players. And now I'm going to speak on this now. And I'm going to address it now in our final segment. You know, DC has properly just kind of segued me in. So I'm just going to keep your super chat on the screen now and speak on it. Uh, but before I do that, 236 people watching us. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you all slap up that like button now. Subscribe to This Is Football if you're ready to do so. Right now, stop what you're doing. Slap up that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're ready to do so. Please like and subscribe now. We are on the road to 13K, ladies and gentlemen. Help us get there. Share, like, subscribe. Big up to DC. Big up to Michael, Amin, Louis, Hussein, and Ryan for the super chats. Big up to everyone who sends in a super chat. All the people who show us love and support. Most support is you all like and subscribe now. So now here's the thing. DC. On, on DC's point right here, right now. The reason why I said I'm going to be looking at Klopp as well, it'll be very interesting the subtraction that happens. It is well documented. And once again, it's not the Hussam ITK knows special information. No, no, no. no. It's well documented by all the top reporters. Jurgen Klopp wanted to keep James Miller. Just saying, Jurgen Klopp wanted to keep James Milner. You know, I've been asked on the terrace, I've been asked on Matisse's channel, on multiple different channels, like what is the actual problem with Chelsea? And I always say Chelsea did a whole lot of addition, not enough subtraction. Not enough subtraction. Arsene Wenger, one of the greatest Premier League managers of all time, has a very interesting quote. He said, sometimes subtraction works like an addition. And I'm not saying this because I have any agenda against the guy, but it's genuinely my honest opinion. Selling Jordan Henderson, even though it's a quote-unquote subtraction, will be an addition to Liverpool Football Club. Now, the question I ask the people who just defend Klopp blindly why is Klopp so sentimental and so not willing to let go? Let's assume Lazio call Jurgen Klopp and they offer 50 million for Joel Matip. Do you think Klopp sells? Like my thing is, I've always said if you put a knife to my throat and say you can only sell Henderson or you can only sell Milner, I'm selling Henderson and I'm keeping Milner. I have no problem with saying that. But my thing is, sometimes you've got to move on from the sentimental approach. Sometimes you've got to move on from the sentimental approach. Guys, life is much bigger than just hugging people. Sometimes you need the middle finger shown to you. You know... Sentimentals and hugging people and telling people they're good only takes you to a certain level. And this is when, when I say move on useless players. Roberto Firmino only is leaving Liverpool Football Club because he wants to leave. James Miller is leaving Liverpool Football Club because he wants to leave. Notice. Notice. He wants to leave. We go back to last summer. Sadio Mane... Jurgen Klopp, well documented once again, wanted to give him the money. Like, this is why, for me, Jurgen Klopp is not blameless. This is why, 
like we also need to look at things from Jurgen Klopp's perspective. Why is it that we want to just huggy, huggy, lovey, dovey all the time? We need a little bit of ruthlessness. Or actually, we need a lot of ruthlessness. Because I look at the squad. Adrian, Sell, happily. Gomez, Sell. Matip, Sell. Henderson, Sell. Milner, Sell. Ox, Sell. Keita, Sell. Firmino is going anyway. That's eight already. Where is going to be the subtraction? Because we need subtraction. We need subtraction. And this is why earlier on, when I said what I said on Klopp, I stick by it. This summer, this summer, you guys, let us all cut the crap here. If I see Mason Mount walk through this door for 70 million of the king's finest, we're going to have problems. Then, my attention is going to shift to Jurgen Klopp. I'm going to ask him, what are you doing? Simple as. Simple as. Big up to Michael Talks Football once again. Uh, he says, of course, no judgment now. I'm just fearing the worst for the summer because it's so vital. If we get it wrong, it will be Europa League. Europa for years. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh. <laughs> Michael. You know what it says? Michael, thank you for the super chat. But this is why I kept Romulus's comment. It's either prosperity or demise, nothing in between. And I think Michael is the perfect response to your super chat because I agree with that. Now it's either prosperity or demise. Either we go start challenging for Premier League and Champions League and do this and do that, or it's proper demise. Either this is the demise of Liverpool Football Club or it's the prosperity of Liverpool Football Club. And you want to hear the truth? Besides the budget, it's all in Klopp's hands. If my budget is 150 million and I spend 80 of it on McAllister and 70 on Mount, then I'm looking at Klopp. I ain't looking at anyone else. I'm sorry. You might argue the budget should be more. I agree the budget should be more. I'm FSG out. But I'm also going to look at how you spend the budget. If you're going to spend me 150 million on a Mount and a McAllister, then we're going to speak. Then we're going to talk. You best believe that. You best believe we're going to have these conversations. Because speaking of George not being a yes man, you guys know me. I ain't a yes man either. I'm not going to sit up here and just agree with everything that the club does or my manager does and just go like, yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. no. I'm not going to find any way to justify it. Mason Mount is the wrong signing to begin with. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here because I've got to go do Battle of the North. Um... Thank you guys so much for joining us on a special edition show. I felt like I needed to do, to be honest with you, to have this conversation with, with my lovely, lovely, lovely subscribers, all the people who watch me. Remember, we're going to be back at 11 p.m. So I want 197 of you, as soon as the live video starts at 11 p.m., to be there with your popcorn because Kurdish is joining, Tom Little is joining, Rax is joining, and Monts might be joining us as well. So it's going to be an absolutely fantastic show at 11 p.m. UK. Do not miss it. As for this very second, big up to you guys. Make sure you slap the likes. Make sure you guys subscribe to This Is Football if you're ready to do so. We are one like away from 150. Let's end the video on 150 likes. Big up to DC, Michael, Amin, Lewis, Kosai, and Ryan for the super chats. Big up to every single one of you guys. Slap up the like button. Subscribe to the channel before you go. The uh, road to 12.9k continues. And we will see you at 11 p.m. inshallah. Peace out, folks.